Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Returning to the circle, our next guest is a minister, resident psychology expert for Radio One, and relationship expert who is here to talk about what he calls is the new public health crisis. Ooh. Loneliness. Ooh, whoa, my God. Please welcome back down to the circle, Alduan Tart. How are yeah. you, Dr. Hey, Tart? Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Good. All right, man. So since um, Surgeon General 2017, uh, Vivek, Murphy has spoken out about loneliness, how it can affect your lifespan. Wow. What's your take on that? Uh, well, we know that loneliness, chronic loneliness, takes 10 to 12 years off of your life. Mm -hmm. That's a 26% bump in mortality. Oh. So that's on par with smoking and obesity. Loneliness. Wow. Loneliness. Because oh. think about it. When you're lonely, you produce cortisol. Mm -hmm. All right. And that, we're not talking about being single. We're talking about feeling alone, mm -hmm. feeling like you don't have anyone that cares for you. You don't feel like anyone that gets you. You can be in a relationship. You could be at work oh, and wow. feel lonely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what we yeah. know is that one in 10 teens are feeling that every oh. day. Oh my goodness. Is there a distinct difference between being alone and being lonely? Right. So a lot of times some people say, I'm, I'm single. That doesn't mean I'm lonely. Right. Right. No, right. because you're socially connected right. to your church, to a book club, to an exercise club, to your friends, to your family. And likewise, you can be in a relationship, but if you have a husband or wife that's working all the time, or you all are ignoring each other with social media, or you just can't talk, mm. you feel lonely and disconnected. Mm. And what that does is that produces cortisol, and you have people that are not getting enough attention staying up at night, not being able to sleep, mm. problems with their stomach, problems with their shoulders, problems mm. with their back. What? And it's because they're not getting enough back. What? Think you about it. We're pack animals. We're that, created. That true. What happens when you don't touch a baby? You know the right. baby's fine. You can feed them. You can give them but something to drink. But so do we all need it too. And when okay. we're by ourselves, it's not good. Okay, but what about... Cause see, sometimes I like being by myself. I love so what about <laughs> if you? Because uh, I'm I'm a low key loner. So mm. what if you choose to be alone a lot? Does that lead to loneliness? Is that a good thing or is that yeah, a bad thing? You, you just hit it. It depends on how you feel. See, loneliness is the difference between what you want and what you have when it comes to mm. connection and intimacy. So a lot of times, like for, for me, you know, I, I'm in front of people all day. When I go home, I like to unwind. I mm -hmm. like to do things. I like it when there's no one in the gym. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. But if I haven't seen enough people, I don't want to be in alone all, all the time. So it just depends on your personality type. Mm -hmm. You know, you know when you feel lonely. And when you feel it, you have to do something about it. Ooh. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, it just got me thinking. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Ms. lonely. Clark, that's just... all right. No, it's okay. I, w I was thinking, too, because people can be married and still feel alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I experienced it actually in my latter years of my, my marriage, but here nor there it's over now. But um, let me just fast forward. Let's talk a little bit. You know what I'm saying, right? Let's talk a little bit about social media and its, its effect that it has on young people uh, psychologically. I have two nieces. I love them. I actually have more than two, but the two oldest ones, mm -hmm. they get it in on that social media. They came to visit me for spring break. I almost took my wig off. They had my nerves so bad. Oh, my Lord. That they just, it was every every 10 seconds. I couldn't believe it. What is the effect that that's having on our youth? And are they chasing attention? It's, it's all bad. Mm -hmm. It's all bad. I'm just going to be clear. We, we know it. Uh, for every, if you spend more than two hours a day on social media, you're twice as likely uh, to be depressed. Because what it is, when you push that phone, it releases dopamine into your system, all right? And you'll keep clicking and clicking and clicking because you click, but it doesn't make you happier. And so it feels like you're socially connected, but you're not because you're spending two hours ignoring everyone around you. Mm -hmm. And so when you finish social media, even though you click and you push, you don't feel any happier. You feel lonelier. And so what we know with kids that don't naturally have those connections, mm -hmm. so we were brought up to play outside, join yeah. groups, connect. Yes. They're not. They're spending their whole life on Snapchat, mm -hmm. Instagram, and they're not happy at all. If I can say, I, I can't stand it. I can't stand when I invite somebody to lunch or dinner or whatever, Ooh, or they come over. I, I invite them over so they can watch their phone. No, I, it, it drives me absolutely batty. It gets my goat every day on time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't we have docking stations where you, when you come in, you have to dock your phone. Our oldest daughter is 13. We took their phone when they came to the birthday party and made them play spoons, made them play Uno, yeah, made cool. them play uh, they, they heads up. We made Jeez. them do different things so they connect. And they had a ball because yes. you can mm -hmm. see a, a number of teen girls in the room looking at their phone. And when someone speaks, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you ignoring me. Oh. oh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. oh. That 
that was good. Oh say that God. again. I didn't mean it. So when you look at your phone right? and you say, can you talk, people get annoyed that you interrupted them. Mm -hmm. Ignoring you, mm -hmm. and that's that what we're doing true. in a relationship. That's we look at the phone like what? Mm -hmm. Man, that happens. We, I'm gonna play this back. Why? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I'm gonna play this this whole oh, back. Okay, my back. son can forget it. I'm gonna go right home and take his stuff. <laughs> yes, it's fine. <laughs> limited. You want oh, a limited this, screen time? Yeah, he's he's done. Um, men, and now especially black men, they tend to suppress their feelings because they were raised to man up. Mm -hmm. You know, so any emotions that they have. You know, it, I'm sure that that has to uh, lead to a bit of loneliness. I feel how that. can we reverse that? Like, because that's how you guys are raised to be strong. You know, but you have to be strong by yourselves. Right, and it really, well, that's what you're taught. Yeah, well, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's toxic it's wrong. masculinity. Mm -hmm. Toxic, right. toxic masculinity. Ma masculinity really? that you are a robot. You're a cyborg. You have no emotions. Right. So your mom dies, your dad dies. You you drop the football. You get an F. You get retained, and you have no feelings about that. Right. That's not manly. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is you end up bleeding out on your friends and family. Mm -hmm. End up drinking because you have to you have to soothe. So you drink. You smoke. You have sex addiction. All right, you mm. fight. All right, that's what we're taught is socially acceptable. But it's actually manlier to be able to sit and talk about your feelings. What you talk about, you control. What you can't talk about controls you. Well, how Ooh, do you get good. them to talk? Ooh, Wait, all right, so here's, here's how you do it. You don't ask a man if he's OK. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm straight. We're, we're hard. It's like in church. How are you? Blessed and highly favored. Wow. Okay? That's the script. That's the yeah, script. But it's you script. ask him is a different question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you? Ooh, Most men would be like a three, a two. Oh, wow. It's just how you ask the question. I'm about to go well, ask. I'm doing that I'm, today. I'm gonna ask too. But but to wrap this up. Like, what are some of the symptoms of loneliness, and how can we tackle the epidemic head on? Uh, depression, anxiety. But the one that's most surprising that we all see are people that say that they don't like people. All right. So so a defense mechanism. What's up with that? So a defense mechanism. If I've been rejected or if I don't trust people, I don't trust you first. Mm -hmm. So I reject you. I don't speak to you. Yeah. I keep my circle small. Mm -hmm. The whole Drake, no new friends. Mm -hmm. I do that. And what it does is it keeps me safe from being rejected, mm -hmm. but it guarantees my isolation because I build this wall. Mm -hmm. I even tell people I don't talk to you. I don't kick it with you. I don't connect with you. We, I can say hi and bye, but that's it. Don't invite me to coffee because I don't trust people. Oh, that's what they tell me. And what it does is it leads you, like if, if you're a woman and then you're in a relationship, you're going to put all of your needs for attention on that man. And therefore, it leads you socially disconnected. Because most women have three to four close girlfriends. Mm -hmm. that if you don't speak to me, that's okay. Yeah. But if I don't, I don't like other women and then I have problems with my man and he's giving me the silent treatment, that feels like death. Mm -hmm. So you, you're Lord. pressed to stay in that relationship because he's the only source for attention. Ooh, oh, cheapers. Did you come down here ready today? I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. I, 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 we all wow. wow. right. sitting there like, wow, I got it. Wow. That's why it's a real epidemic. It really is. Real and, and I'm so glad that we're able to talk about it. So many people are going to be blessed from this segment yeah. today because we don't, people don't know what what we're dealing with, yeah. not just we, but just as a community, and loneliness is one of those things. Yeah. That's right. We don't even do, know it. Yeah, we're actually doing an event. My wife is doing it. I've been banned. Right. Just for women to uh -huh. connect around health and wellness. Okay. Right. Good. So you can find well, out about it on Instagram. It. Yes, well, absolutely. You look at all my folks there. Thanks for setting the light on this crucial topic. Again, Dr. Tart, be sure to follow him at Dr. Tart on Instagram, Instagram where you can also find information about his wife's self-care event, which you just mentioned.